Hello everyone, my name is Travis DeWolf. I am a co-founder and senior research scientist at Applied Brain Research. The title of my talk today is Adaptive Neurorobotics Using Nengo and the Loihi. I'm going to present some of the work from our latest paper that came out in Frontiers in Neurorobotics. For everything that I'm showing you today, the code is available online on ABR's public GitHub. And if you're interested in any other work that I've done, you can check out my research blog at studywolf.com. The focus of this talk is being able to build neurorobotic systems. We want end-to-end -end perception and action neural networks, systems where there's no intervention by a human between perceiving the environment and performing a motor action, autonomous systems. So what are the basic requirements? We can usually break it down into three steps taking in and processing sensory input, generating output control signals that incorporate environmental feedback, and then overall there will be some goal that we want the network to achieve. Additionally, for embedded brains, running on edge hardware is a huge plus because we get big savings on energy and reduce the response latency, which can directly affect performance in neurorobotic applications. And running our network on some of the really efficient edge hardware may require implementing our networks in spiking neurons. Then lastly, when building up these networks, it's ideal to be able to take advantage of tools that we already know how to use instead of having to learn some completely new set of techniques. For neural networks and robotics, this will include deep learning methods as well as approaches from control theory literature and the like. The tool that I'll be using to do all of this is called Nengo. It's Applied Brain Research's neural development platform and has been used for a whole host of various applications, from the very neuroscientifically motivated world's largest functional brain model called Spawn, to the very industrially motivated low power neuromorphic keyword spotting. One of the key features of Nengo is that it compiles to a bunch of different backends. So we can design our neural network on our workstation CPU or GPU, and then take that same design and run it in super efficient edge hardware like Luigi, Spinnaker, FPGA, or the Braindrop, to name a few. This video shows what the process of changing backends looks like in the Nengo GUI. Using off. the aforementioned keyword spotting network that's been trained aloha. to recognize the word aloha. So we're starting Hello. in Ningo DL, which implements a TensorFlow backend. And then to change to run this network on Ningo FPGA, the user clicks settings, configure, and then chooses a backend from the list of available options. And then running this network aloha. on Ningo FPGA, we get the same performance on different hardware. Take a load off. And then the last thing I'll mention here is that Nengo also comes with a bunch of pre-built networks that help non-experts build up complex dynamical systems quickly, like our action selection network, modeled after the basal ganglia, which is heavily involved in decision making in biological brains. Other ready-to-go drop-in networks include an associative memory, integrator, oscillator, and gated memory. On this slide, I'm showing the Nengo GUI again, the model being simulated is just a single population of recurrently connected neurons implementing Lorenz attractor dynamics. The GUI is also visualizing the data flowing through the network as it's running. We can see a spike raster plot at the top, and then using population decoding, we are also viewing the 3D signal represented by this ensemble of neurons plotted against time at the bottom and then several 2D plots of different represented values plotted against each other on the right. Networks are defined using a Python API with the code for this network shown on the right half. Where Nengo really shines is as a tool for integration. When I'm in my neurorobotics development workflow, I need to be able to easily integrate a whole bunch of different kinds of things, like optimization methods, runtime dynamics, and backend hardware. On the perception side of my system, I want to be able to quickly build and train neural networks using deep learning, or import already built models from TensorFlow and Keras. 
on the control side of my system, I want to build up neural networks using the Neural Engineering Framework, or the NEF, which is a white box approach that lets you mechanistically build up neural networks from circuit diagrams and implement algorithms from control theory literature. And then, of course, I need these two different parts to communicate seamlessly. Complex networks can have a lot of different components performing different functions. It's often very helpful to modularly be able to switch between running different sections as straight Python code, non-spiking or rate mode neurons, and spiking neurons during the building and debugging process. As part of this, if you've integrated a network that was built in TensorFlow or Keras, it was designed to only run in non-spiking neurons. So having tools to help convert that network to spiking neurons is also very useful. Finally, as I mentioned before, being able to compile the network that we've developed to a bunch of different backends can save us a lot of time rewriting code to handle different hardware and drivers. And in some cases, we want integrated solutions where different components of the network are running on different backends, and Nengo lets us do all of this. I'm going to work through two neurorobotic examples today built using Nengo and running on the Luigi. The first is an end-to-end -end perception and action network that drives a rover simulated in Majoko to track a target, and the second is an implementation of nonlinear adaptive control that augments a force-based controller with an adaptive population using on-chip learning to better perform a reaching task. So let's look at the rover example. Here's the setup. I've built a very simple rover in the Majoko physics simulator with rear wheel drive and Ackerman steering on the front wheels. It's uh, visualized here on the left. The rover is in an environment that is devoid of all features except a horizon and a red ball. The rover has four cameras mounted on top that provide 360 degrees of visibility with the view from each camera shown on the right. I want to build a brain for this rover that will drive it to the target as the target warps around the environment. For perception, all we want to do is take in the four images and then output the XY position of the target relative to the rover. We use the first convolutional layer just for converting the input image into spikes to send onto the Luigi, and it just has kernel size one by one with stride of one. Since this is a pretty simple problem, the network has no issues learning it. To generate the data set, I implemented the control circuit in Python functions and got target position information directly from Majoko. I then sampled data points as the rover drove around, and the perception network trained on about 40,000 images. The control circuit is also very straightforward. The acceleration of the rear wheels is a function of the distance to the target, clipped at one meter and multiplied by a gain term. So once the target gets within one meter of the rover, it starts slowing down. The steering is just a simple position controller that calculates the difference between the angle to the target and the current angle of the front wheels, multiplied by a gain term. And here's what the network architecture looks like. You can see, aside from one convolutional layer converting the Majoko feedback into spikes, everything is running on the Luigi. Here are the results of the network. We see the control output in the top two plots and the vision network output in the lower two plots, with the network output in blue and the ideal output in red. So for three of these plots, it's easy to see that the spiking neural output is pretty close to the ideal output. In the rear wheels torque plot here, you can see that basically the rover is just always applying the same torque. These drops in the ideal signal occur as the target is approached, but basically the rover drives straight through the target, the target changes location, and the rover keeps going. So there's definitely room for improvement in this circuit design. Here's what the trajectory that the rover takes looks like from above, plotted like a family circus comic. The green X is where the rover started, and the blue X's are target locations. And here's what the rover looks like in action. An 
end-to-end -end spiking neuron perception and action network that drives the rover to track targets. This network integrates both a deep net perception system with an NEF control network that implements the equations shown on the previous slide. Taking advantage of Nengo's interfaces package to handle the setup and the communication with Majoko, this trained network is implemented in all of 320 lines of Python code. This next example shows how we can use neuromorphic solutions to augment existing control applications to achieve improved performance. This video is from some past work that we did with Intel creating an interactive conference demonstration showing the adaptive controller. It highlights both how the adaptive controller improves performance and the difference that a neuromorphic implementation makes. First, the arm reaches to four different targets in its workspace. And an important detail here is that this is a force control system, meaning that torques are being sent to the arm. This requires a very precise model of the dynamics, so when the arm picks up a weight and tries to reach to all the targets again, we can see that it doesn't do nearly as well because its model of the arm dynamics doesn't account for this unexpected weight. When we augment our force controller with an adaptive neural control signal, we see that the neurons learn to account for the effects that the weight has on the arm. And as the arm reaches successive targets, it takes less and less time to adapt because it's building on what it's already learned. And the last thing to note in this video is that the CPU implementation is running much slower than the Luigi implementation, so that the Luigi implementation finishes in less than 40 seconds, while the CPU implementation takes almost a full minute to simulate the same amount of time. When we move to the real world, our setup is the position and velocity feedback signal being sent from the Jacko 2 to a workstation which generates our standard force control signal U. The feedback and standard signal are sent to the chip, which simulates an ensemble of neurons whose input is the feedback from the arm and whose training signal is the basic control signal U. The chip then sends this adaptive signal back to the workstation, which sends out the sum of the two control signals together to the arm. You can intuitively think of this adaptive control signal as a kind of context-sensitive integrated error term. So the basic control signal is doing PD control, accounting for position and velocity error, and then this adaptive term is learned as a function of the arm state and the error, where a normal integrated error term is a single learned parameter that's applied all throughout the state space the nonlinear adaptive term depends on the activity of a population of neurons, all of whom are sensitive to different parts of the arm's state space. One of the really nice features of the nonlinear adaptive control is that it's guaranteed to perform at least as well as a standard integrated error term. There are a few stipulations about the number of neurons and the shape of the response curves and noise, but in general, we can be confident that implementing this adaptive control will improve the performance of our system. Another nice feature is that the training signal we're using is the same sliding control signal that we were already calculating. Details about the derivation and the stability of this can be found in a few places. The original 1987 paper works through learning the coefficients when you explicitly know equations of motion for the system. The 1991 paper extends this to learning weights for Gaussian basis functions. And then in my thesis and 2016 paper, we further extend it to run with spiking neurons by taking advantage of the methods of the NEF and the prescribed error sensitivity learning rule. The circuit design this time is much simpler because we're just augmenting an existing controller with a single population of neurons running on the Luigi, where we take advantage of the on-chip learning through Nengo's API. So the feedback from the arm is sent to the base controller and the neurons, and the base controller's output is used as the training signal for the adaptive ensemble. Now let's look at some results. 
the task that we're having the arm do is just reaching to the same target over and over again. Each reach from the starting position to the target counts as one trial, and we measure the deviation from a straight line as the error. To test adaptation, we perform this reach with an unmodeled two pound weight in the hand of the arm. In this plot, the black line is the performance of the non-adaptive PD controller reaching without the weight. The gray line is the performance of the non-adaptive PD controller reaching while holding the two pound weight. Then the brown line is the performance of a PID controller and the nonlinear adaptive control implemented on the CPU, GPU, and Luigi are the green red and blue lines, respectively. So what we're seeing here is that the neuromorphic adaptive control is reducing the error during reaching to half of that achieved by the integrated error and adaptive implementations running on standard hardware. When we look at the latency of the different implementations, it's pretty much as you might expect with the PD and PID implementations running the fastest, then Luigi, then CPU, and then GPU, all simulating neurons. It's worth noting here that we're only actually simulating a thousand neurons while measuring latency on these runs. So while the Luigi and the GPU latency won't change that dramatically as we start scaling up, the CPU latency will actually start growing quite quickly with the network size. The last thing that we'll look at here is the dynamic power cost of each of these adaptive implementations, which is the energy consumed when running the simulation minus the idle energy cost. The idle energy cost is just the amount of power that the hardware consumes being turned on and not doing anything else. So what we're really trying to get at here is just the power cost of simulating neurons on each piece of hardware. And we see that the power savings that we get by running on Luigi are between 5 and 40x. It's worth noting again that we're only simulating a thousand neurons while collecting these numbers, and when we're running larger systems, the savings from running them on neuromorphic hardware becomes more and more significant. So that concludes my talk working through these examples highlighting two different applications for neurorobotics. In the first example, we built an end-to-end -end perception and action network using familiar deep learning and control theory methods to build out the parts of the system, and then Ningo to integrate them, implement them in spiking neurons, and compile them to run on the Luigi. The second example showed a very different application where we augmented an existing force controller with nonlinear adaptation. This application was based off of adaptive control work from MIT, and using Nengo's NEF API, we were able to implement the same learning using spiking neurons. We then used Nengo to compile the code for running on Luigi, where we were able to take advantage of its on-chip learning to get improved performance using 5 to 40x less power than implementations on standard computing hardware. Both examples built out solutions to run on edge hardware and were able to take advantage of tools that we already knew using one that maybe you didn't know about called Nengo. Thank you very much for your time and attention, and if you'd like to learn more after the session today, please don't hesitate to contact me. Thank you.